Look at how absolutely key the texture is. Mm. The subtlety that he provides in his painting is all through here with the texture on the wall. If it just goes flat, like I left the texture in her face, but if I had just painted her all flat as well. You need yeah. the, the light in the, in the curtains especially. Yeah, the that's, the, yeah, the pattern. So pattern, pattern and texture are surprisingly important in here. You know, we often think of texture as being like, um, they're really obvious, mm -hmm. but just because it's not really obvious doesn't mean it's not really important here. Mm. I, I like, I would like it if it was all flat shaped, it would show the silhouettes. Mm. Um, and basically he's got one, two, three, maybe six shapes there. That's it, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Um, and that's the structure of the painting. And then you can put all the gingerbread on top, but if you don't have that, you've got nothing. Well, it's true though. Like we talk about this right here. Yeah. You, look, you look at this structure first before yeah. you go and add in the complexities and the subtleties, right? Yeah, that's exactly this here. This is exactly what we've been doing. Right. That, I mean, that's what right? you, want. you want. The structure. And that's why. Yeah. And look at this little circle up in the why, why do you think you put that there? Yeah. See in the see this. It really stands out here because I didn't change it. It's still texturized. I think it's to repeat the circle that's right here. Yeah. Oh. yeah. My, yeah. my view is repetition of shape because there are no other circles in here. It creates a triangle between the head, the circle, and the hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. It, it gives you a sense of space receding, like perspective. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to stop the share for a sec. I don't think I had any more there. There's the original again. So I, I love the strength of this, Peter. It's just like you can see the shapes kind of like we just did with Whistler's mother. Yeah, well, exactly. When you do that and you ignore what things are and you just go with whether I'm just drawing whether something's in the shade or in the light. I don't care what the local value is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that's what you do, shade or light. And that's a structure being dictated by actually the presence of a light. Yeah, so the, that's the earlier one. Oh, you did a black and white on me. There's the black and white or grayscale. Yeah. And there's the color. That's yeah, we're drawn to the lights back here, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. that's the idea. Draw yeah. you in to the back. My, my suggestion, down. Peter, is going to be multiple pathways because right now yeah. this is the obvious one. Yes. Yeah. The light but one. I'd like to have a bit more choice. No, you'd fall off and hit the Saskatchewan glacier down in the gully. <laughs> if you were to pop something, Right, mm -hmm. like right now, it's a definite come in from here, curve around to there and into the back, which is a lovely kind of S curve. Yeah. So, so my question to you is, why, why would I go over here? I can tell why I'd go over here. It's just back to that whole thinking of every square inch of the painting. Other, other areas of interest. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at. You would, you would <laughs> go right off here. Maybe. If we go off here, something a little stronger back. Can you guys see my cursor? Yes. Yeah. Okay, perfect. So when you come, if we do fall off, as it were, something a little stronger to come back in right here. Either color, like it could be color mm -hmm. in here, could be lighter here, could be a, a, just a single brush stroke. Mm -hmm. so, something, something for this area right here. Anita, I, I have a question. If if the lights are leading you, you're talking about the lights now, so you're going to fall off the mountain. Mm -hmm. If you follow the lights, do you need to be brought back into the picture by the lights or can you be brought in by darks? It can be by anything. Yeah, by anything. You okay. can be brought back in by color, by shape, by line. So yeah. we're not, you're not wow. trying to create a pattern of falling off and coming back with lights and then falling off and coming back with darks and then falling separately. Do you know, do you understand? I know what, what you mean. mean. I know what yeah. you mean. You know, the, the other thing that you could be done is that uh, the main mountain on there, mm -hmm. if it just had a sharper edge, just about a half that's inch, sharp edge, a little bit over to the left, Alita. There, that's where it needs to hit. That there you work. go. That would work too. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, just something to give this side. Oh, I'm so used to using my hands. This is a yeah. great example of where the whole sky is, is the same tone of value pretty much, but it changes mm -hmm. in color. Yeah, we basically have yellow, blue, red, and green. Yeah. 
My suggestion is in this section to break it up just a little bit. So still keep it. I love how everything is within the yellows. So you have you have yellow that slightly goes to uh, orange and then slightly over to yellow green, but everything is staying within yellows there. And then on this one, everything is staying within greens, but there's slight changes. And then up here, everything stays within blue, but there's slight changes. And down here, everything in red, but slight changes. So it's, all, it's actually almost like a color study. You know, the interesting sort of texture, I love how you broke up the lines down here. So they're not all really obvious. Mm -hmm. Right, there's just sort of a smattering and then the texture that's here. The other one is this really, really strong line here. Yep. If that could just be broken up either with uh, just a brush stroke where the tone, it just it it breaks it. Some edges. Yeah, just a lost mm -hmm. edge right there. Like you could go from here to here Enjoy. and just have that be a lost edge or even make this a softer edge. Yeah, yeah, because I it, edges are something I really want to work on because okay. I often find I don't have enough sort of lost edges and right. Okay. So yeah, that that's the, that's the main thing I would say. And that's I mean, you're painting I mean. in acrylics. So, mm. uh, you know, doing the, what, one thing you could do at the very end is you could just come and especially with a sky like this, where it's a pretty uniform blue along here. Yeah. Try and repaint the blue, repaint a little bit of the green and then just soften in a few areas, not all the way along, but give it a few. So like, some soft edges, some harder edges, and, and really work these edges here. Yes, yeah. All right, I think it's Marius up next. Ooh, nice. Ooh, yeah, lovely. I especially love the apple. Look at your, it just looks like it's uh, Look at it there. juicy and ready to eat. I hated the, the yellow bottle, so <laughs> it shows. <laughs> ah, it doesn't show that you hated it. I, 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 don't, I don't get that impression, but uh, Beautiful edges starting to happen here. Really nice. And the brushwork, like the looseness, I know you were concerned about tightening up too much. Yeah. Did you feel like you went too tight on this one? I was tight on the, on the base. Okay. Because of all, all, all the design in the base, I simplified it, if you remember. Actually, yeah. it's your base. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was loose on the, I intentionally wanted to be loose on the flowers. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they're they're working. Yeah. And uh, basically, I'm sort of influence on what uh, we did with Kong Po. Yeah. You know, I try to apply a little bit of that, that. which is great because this is very sort of a Quang Ho kind of painting, isn't it? Yeah. For subject matter. Okay. Well, and let's just do a quick look at the grayscale. You can see how well it works there too. Yeah. Nicely done. Okay. Thank you. Oh, and here's your second one. It looks like there's glare from the floor. Yeah, that's that's a problem. Actually, yeah. I did the I did the background. Yeah. And uh, you know, painted big shapes, sort of stuff. And when I I went on the second layer, the painting was already dried. Yeah. And I wanted to work a little bit on the edges around the fruits and the vegetables in the, mm -hmm. the base. Yeah. So I applied another layer of I think it was burnt amber. Okay. I put a little bit of burnt amber in the mixture and when it dried up, it looks like, as it looks. It doesn't look good. I, I learned something. Yeah, uh, but you know what? It's, it's uh, not difficult to kind of get that back to where- Oh, when, isn't? No, and I'm loving these grapes. Look at, they're just- Yeah, I, I work a lot on those. It's yeah. my first time I paint grapes, so I-, I Okay. To, yeah. Well, well done. Yeah, and the, tex you. the texture on the squash and beautiful uh, top of this, the tabletop. Um, double check something about the ellipse here. Is it too round? Yeah, it's a little bit too round. It needs to be just squished in a little bit on this yeah. side. Which, which when you do your background, that'll be perfect anyway. Yeah. Per perfect time yeah. to reshape that. Okay. And then um, uh, once again, hard to tell for sure from this photo, but take a look at the bottom side of this vase and make sure, make sure that this area is dark enough. As I, as I look at it right here, like, yes, it is reflected light. Uh, in terms of value. In terms of value, yeah. No, the picture is not good. Okay. Yeah. So just, you know your painting, so just double check the painting and make sure that it falls into the dark side of things. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, that, that's, that's all. I'll just show in uh, grayscale. I think it's beautiful. I know. Wow. 
you know, if it's beautiful in the grayscale with your brushwork and the tonal values and the consistency of your paint and the composition and all of those things, then color just makes it go bang, you know? Mm. So yeah, yeah, right away I'm seeing tonal values on this side. Can you see how these need to be darker? Ah, uh, yes. All, yeah. your, all your tonal values on this side. Yeah, let's, let's flip to the color. Yeah. yeah, I thought I'd made them darker, but they're not that dark, really. They're not really. And I know with acrylic, yeah. there's always this fine, like, stepping forward towards, because as soon as you go too dark, you have to have a redo, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, this one was very experimental. Yeah, so that's I, great. Yeah. I, lo I love all these shapes happening in here. That's what I wanted was the, sh I love the shapes too, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I went in and I just used that same blur tool that you saw me use on um, Whistler's Mother to push everything back. It's a way of playing with like, are there some areas where you could soften the edges and other areas yeah. where you keep the edges harder. And so our eye will bing, 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 bing along the ones where there's harder edges. Yeah, yeah. No, um, I, I, I am, um, this one, I, like I say, it was really, the shapes and the values and tree. Absolutely. But so I got this far and then I thought, well, I don't know. I don't know what, I don't know how, what to do. Yeah. How large is this painting? Uh, 24 by 24. Okay. You have space to work on it. Like if it was yeah. a really small painting, you'd be sort of dithering yeah. away and that would have And it's, it's oil. It's, I did it in oil. Cause okay. I <laughs> oh, perfect. You know what? I would use this one as an absolute playtime with edges. I think so. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't see what else I can really do with it, but I'm happy to play on it because uh, here it is as grayscale, and so even in the grayscale, we can see how there's a there's so much going on. It's hard to know where to look first, where to look second, yeah. where to look it's, third. Of course, yeah. And so play with your edges. Just have this be like um, an exercise in edges. Right. Moving our eye around, just using hard, soft edges on yeah. scale. Yeah. It can translate into a very bland kind of a painting. It can. So I'm intrigued to know how how to elevate to something more interesting. I think that's what I, you know, was was kind of intrigued. What, what I'm intrigued with. In my head, I just went through all the possible things. You know, do you change the yeah. color? Do you change? So already, yeah. this one is pri primarily about shape. It is. Secondarily, about um, mm -hmm. tone of value. Yep. Yeah. And obviously repetition and all the rest yeah. of it. And so yeah. um, I, stay within that. You okay. Know, if, if you, uh, we, we could go into some subtleties of color after as like a third thing. Right. Yeah, yeah. And in a painting like this, is it worth trying to create like a focal point or is well, it just to just let your eye wander through it or what would yeah, you Yeah, what, what I would say is create a pathway that leads to something and okay. then we can decide from that thing which direction we want to go. Okay. So a so lot I'm of people would call that a focal area or a focal point, but just <laughs> okay. somewhere where you lead to it, we realize that that's an area of interest, and then we get to move on to another area, mm -hmm. that's an area of interest. So okay. in this one, maybe pick like one, two, or three main areas of interest, okay. and that, that will help you decide you know, where to do your hard and soft edges too. Sure. Yeah, okay. I agree. And like we've talked about often with our paintings, we're, we're trying to find some kind of balance between chaos and unity. And you might want to actually head more over into the chaos part of it. Like when I say balance, I don't mean you have to be right in the center. No, sure. Yeah. Right. Like you, it's just, it's where is, where are you sitting along that line? Yeah. Um, and it, it comes down to sort of the, f obviously the feeling of it and then also yeah. the readability. Yeah. Okay. Great. If you were to do a painting that had all of these, like the pot right now for me is actually taking away in this one. Oh, is it? Yeah. How so? Um, I thought that the painting is so busy, is so sort of blastful that the pot was maybe restful. It, it is in a way. It might be the... Well, it's kind of unfinished anyway. I just kind yeah, of... It, this I didn't know what to do next, so... Right. I don't want to well, over do it, which I tend to do. I totally understand. If if you could print this off as a grayscale, yeah, and then draw on it and try to just slightly reduce the size or maybe mm. make the shape a little more of the narrow. Part. Okay, okay. Mm. Wider at the top. I, I think, yeah, okay. what it is is it's the shape of the vase is what's bothering okay. me. It, it being so right. square. 
Okay. You're right. I agree. The whole space thing. But what you could do is you could pull some of these flowers. Like you could have one sort of come down. Yeah. In, into this space. Think sure, it, does, it does kind of cut off it. I agree it does. It's like separate. They're like two separate. Yeah. World. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. But I love, I just, I love this. I'd love to see more of that in other stuff. All yeah, that through here. It was a fun one to do. Yeah. And there it is as grayscale. Anybody have any questions either about uh, your pieces, like now that you've had time to think about them? Hmm. Do you want me to keep shifting through Whistler's mother? <laughs> yeah, right. And actually, you know what, Caroline, this uh, in this stage is very similar to what you have in that painting with all the shapes of the leaves and stuff. Yeah, and this is right. what my dilemma has been, should I just keep it as a simple, it's just a simply a graphic thing with shapes and right. edges and so on, or, but I will play with it definitely mm -hmm. and see what happens, yeah. Or, or if you soften the edges or, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's great. So that was pretty fun, hey? So what I just did there shows you some of the things I'll be able to do with your images in the future. But instead of me saying, oh, imagine this painting without that cloud there, I'm actually learning how to just like take it out or like take it out and move it over somewhere else. Yeah, so yeah. You, you don't have to imagine it. You'll, you'll be able to see it. Yeah. 